Welcome back to Max Garage. If you like what you see, hit the like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff that helps me out. So today I'm standing here with the 2004 Chevy Silverado. It's a 2500 HD with the 6 liter gas engine. And this is my winter beater for this winter, hopefully. If you've subscribed to the channel for a while, you might remember I did like the same thing about this time last year on a, uh, I think it was a 99 Chevy Suburban that I had fixed and ready to drive for the winter by spring. So I just sold it and uh, bought this one. So I'm hopefully going to have this ready to go. I'll give you a walk around in a second, but just what I know right now, low oil pressure possible transmission issues. I haven't experienced it yet, but I was told that sometimes in the morning it slips. Uh, I did drive it cold and it seems like it shifts hard, like it revs out before it shifts, but that's kind of a normal thing. So I haven't experienced a problem with that yet, so maybe trans, maybe engine. Um, the tires, which you haven't seen yet, are wore down to the belts and wore real funny, so we got front end issues. Other than that, it is a 18-year-old uh, northern Michigan truck that's in way better shape than I expected for an 18-year-old truck with 306,000 miles on it. So I think that's enough of an intro. I bought it cheap, if you're wondering. Yeah, all those things I just list, listed off, that means it was inexpensive. So let's take a look around, and, uh, and I'll show you. Alright, so if you've watched the channel very much, you'll kind of know that I'm more of a uh, Dodge, Ram, Mopar fan than I am of GM or Ford or any of your foreign makes. But if you're going to buy a Chevy truck, this is like, in my opinion, one of the best eras of Chevy truck you can possibly buy. They're just flat out reliable. They have great engines. Um, the 4L60 is kind of a turd, but... The 4L80 like this one has is a pretty good trans. The half tons had more issues than the three quarter tons. But this is just like, one of my friends called it a cockroach. And that's kind of what they are. They just, they might not be nice. Everything might not work on them. But they just kind of work. So this particular one is a 2004. I'll rub this tire because it's the better of the two. But you can see that it's wore right to the outside. And uh, the other one I'm not even going to run because rub because it has like steel belts sticking out of it. Uh, overall, we got the contractor cap on the back with the Dale Jr. sticker for extra performance. The this is not going to show up on camera, I don't think. Oh, maybe it will. So, some people in the Rust Belt may remember that these beds on these trucks, every once in a while, you got one that just immediately, like within three or four years, started to rust through from the inside out. Most of the time, I remember that being at like an angle up here, but this one has it on both sides in the back and it's old. So, I mean, it's 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 par for the course at this point. Tailgate's rotten. Back bumper's all smashed up. Uh, what else? The rear tires are not good. See this side, same same general area, not as bad as the drivers. This is the really bad tire. Um. Yeah. So down low on it, this truck still has original rocker panels. The cab corners are crusted out on both sides. And for those of you that are in the Northland and know what this means, this truck still has factory brake lines throughout the whole truck. So at 306, 665 miles. Uh, this driver's seat has seen a lot of uh, lot of wear. It's wildly uncomfortable. These trucks were actually pretty comfortable when they're new. And uh, this is one of the most uncomfortable seats I've ever sat in. The middle seat is tore wide open. 
The smell is, I don't know, maybe smoker vehicle. I guess I'm not 100% sure. Radio doesn't quite work right, but it's there. It's got dual zone climate control in a regular cab though, so that's nice. Um, when I was test driving this, I was driving it and I was looking right here and this is me having a bonehead moment. I looked at that spot and I thought, man, I was sure this was a four wheel drive truck from the ad and from whatever, but there's no buttons. And then I thought about it a little bit more and, uh, and I was like, I looked at the transfer case to see if it had a hole war through it or if it was leaking anywhere. I know it has a transfer case. And then I remembered some of these poverty editions have the shifter down here on the floor. So rubber floor, shifter on the floor. You'll see that there's a oil pressure gauge on this and that's because I'm doing the intro after I already did a repair on it. So you'll see the video where I put that in if you want to. But, um, yeah, that wasn't there when I got it. I added that. Uh, yeah, so watch that video to see if I ended up fixing the oil pressure issue or not. Headliner's kind of nasty. <laughs> Under the hood, we've got our 6-liter LS engine, which in these 3 quarter ton trucks is really good at turning fuel into basically nothing. Um, they get pretty bad fuel economy. They will work. They do what they need to do, but they are not a powerhouse by any means. Uh, it's no 8-1, that's for sure. Runs pretty good, though. Does what it needs to do. Got grime everywhere, as you might expect for something with this mileage. Valve cover gaskets. The valve covers are, like, super soaked in oil, so it probably needs a set of valve cover gaskets, too. And we'll pick away at some stuff after I start driving it. So that's it. I'm about to pull this in and do some front end work on it. Like I said in the video, I already did some stuff to it. I did videotape it. It will go up. So my intro is a little bit late, but that's all right. Um, so yeah, like, share, subscribe. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you later.